Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. Here they are, the Eggheads. Taking on the might of our quiz goliaths today are the Chester Romans. Now, this team are all members of one of the UK's oldest American football teams. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Lux and I'm an engineer surveyor. Hi, I'm Pete. I'm a customer assistant. Hi, I'm Mark and I'm a film student. Hi, I'm Billy and I'm a care manager. Hi, I'm John and I'm an oil tank cleaner. So, Lex and team, welcome. Great to see you. Hello. Hi, John. Oh, I love the... That's good. Is that a kind of an on-pitch wave thing? No, it's just something we've just cooked off. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, I loved it. So, tell us, American football is the thing, is it? It's one of the fastest growing sports currently in the UK and it's uh, something we really love getting stuck into. And you're the defensive line, so does that mean they play five at the back in these teams? Uh, no, we, we're actually at the front of the defensive team and it, it's our job to, to make up the, the gaps within the lines to allow our the linebackers in to make the tackles. And what is it about American football that's so exciting? Compared to the British thing where you don't wear a helmet and you kick a ball? We got tackled, no one cries. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, a lot of us have played both rugby uh, as well as soccer and then as well as American football. Um, we've, we've sampled the best of all worlds, really, and don't be fooled by the helmets. It is incredibly painful when you get hit. Sure. Now, I know the team has existed for 30 years. You haven't quizzed before together. Is that Not right? Together. We've, we have quizzed individually, but this is the first time we've all quizzed together. All right, well, I hope you form a good uh, defensive line against this lot here, the eggheads. Good luck. Every day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. If they fail to defeat the eggheads, we roll that prize money over to the next show. So, Chester Romans, the eggheads are playing well. They've now won five games on the trot, so there is six thousand pounds here for you to win if you beat them. Would you like to try? Yes. Okay. Good. The first head to head battle is on the subject of politics. So, you can have either Judith or Steve or Kevin, Dave or Lisa to play against. Lex, you're up. Right. Yeah. 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 Lex. So um, Lex against? I think I'll go with, uh, with Dave. Very good. Straight to it. Lex from Chester Romans. Dave, crash helmet on. I better have it on there. I think you need yeah. it on the shoulder pads as well. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. right. he's defensive and you're highly offensive. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Dave and I are such 80s kids, we, we normally wear shoulder pads anyway, to be honest. <laughs> to ensure there's no conferring, would you please take your positions in our legendary question room? Dave, what do we make of politics at the moment in the world? It's very interesting times, but um, quite uncertain ones. I suppose if you're looking at 2016, having Trump and then Brexit before it, that, that's an incredible sequence. They'll, they'll be quizzing on that in 100 years' time, won't well, they? Yeah, because I think we've spoken about it at quizzes there, that if in doubt we're going to say 2016 yeah. <laughs> going forward, you know, when uh, a few years' time we've forgotten a few events, if it's... When did that happen? 2016 is going to be a good bet because everything seems to be packed in. Anyway, Lex, good luck on politics against so-called tremendous knowledge, Dave. Would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go first, please. Here we go. With reference to government-held data, for what does the letter I stand in FOI? Is it information, intuition or intellect? I think that's information. Yeah. Freedom of information, well done. One to you. OK, Dave. Which party won the greatest number of seats in the 2016 election for the Welsh Assembly? Conservative, Labour or Plaid Cymru? I think that's Labour. Interesting, isn't it, a situation where they get knocked for six in Scotland, but yeah. Wales is still very much Labour terrain. Yeah. Well done. Lex, which Prime Minister was the MP for Highton in the northwest of England? between 1950 and 1983? Harold Wilson, James Callaghan, or Harold Macmillan? I'm not entirely certain with this one, but my instincts when it came up was James Callaghan. So I'd like to go with James Callaghan, please. OK, Prime Minister in the late 70s. Let's just check with the eggheads. Eggs? So Harold Wilson. Wilson. Wilson is the answer, I'm afraid, Lex. So Dave has the edge. Which of these countries has been a member of the European Union since 2004. Dave, is it Switzerland, Serbia or Slovenia? Right, let me have a think. Um, I'm trying to think of when it's a toss-up between Serbia and Slovenia. It's not Switzerland. Well, it's never been a member of the EU. I think Serbia's later. So, no, I'm, I'm going to go with Slovenia, please. Slovenia's quite right, Dave. Well done. 
Back to you, Legs. What term is used for sittings of the House of Commons in the Grand Committee Room at the Houses of Parliament? Westminster Hall debates, central lobby meetings, or robing room forums? I think the only one I can think of um, head of there is the central lobby meetings. It's wrong, actually. It's Westminster Hall debates, and it's, it's a, I suppose, a, a way of additionally having some other things going on apart from what's happening in the chamber. So, sorry, no way back for you. Dave has won that first round. Early days, guys, challenges, don't be alarmed, but your first competitor has been taken out by an egghead and won't be able to be in the final round. Lex and Dave, please return to your teams. OK, so our Chester Romans have lost a brain from the final round. American football equivalent of that is you've, you've let through a try? Yeah, a touchdown. The, a the, touchdown. The defensive line have broke us apart there and gone straight through to the end. Right, but you know better than anyone that it's not over. We bend, don't break. No, they... Exactly. Exactly. Eggheads have lost no one so far. The next subject is film and TV. So who that is? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Come on. So, Mark, film OK, student. film student, Mark. that's really handy. And which egghead? Obviously, can't be Dave. Uh, I'll go for a Judith, please. Lovely. All right, we haven't had a run out on this for a while. Not for ages. No, it's usually sport. So, Mark from the Chester Romans versus Judith from the Eggheads. To ensure there's no conferring, please go to the question room now. This seems like a perfect round for you, Mark, because you're a film student. Well, you would hope so, yeah. We'll see. So, <laughs> what kind of films do you love? Uh, anything. I, I, would, I would watch any film. Uh, TV, not so much. I'm hoping that nothing comes up about any soaps. Uh, but we'll, we'll have to see, so... And do you write scripts yourself? I do. So, you, you were well, these are film scripts? Uh, uh, all that? Yeah, th yeah uh, film scripts, short film scripts, um, even uh, scripts for TV sometimes. That sounds very creative, Judith, doesn't it? It does, yes. We need to get started on that. Well, it sounds rather alarming if you have to quiz against someone like that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's see. Film and TV. Mark, would you like to go first or second? Uh, first, please. <laughs> Here is your first question. The TV soap Emmerdale Farm was originally set in which fictional village? Weatherfield, Ambridge or Beckendale? Yeah, I was hoping this wouldn't come up. Uh, I'm inclined to go with Weatherfield, please. Let's see, maybe Judith knows. Judith? Isn't Weatherfield Coronation Street? Ambridge is the Archers. Yeah. I, I would say Beckendale. Yes, it is Beckendale and Weatherfield is Coronation Street. OK, Judith, your question. In the episode Yuppie Love in the TV series Only Fools and Horses, which character famously falls through the open hatch of a bar? Rodney, Trigger or Del Boy? It's... It's David Jason. No, which one? It, tr it's not Trigger. And Rodney is the young one. It's Del Boy. It is Del Boy, famous yeah. scene. Yeah, like the chandelier I scene, love it. Isn't it. I can see it in my mind. Indelible. It's terribly funny. OK. <laughs> Mark, to catch up, the US legal drama The Good Wife is set in which city? Los Angeles, Chicago or Washington, D.C.? I, I thought Chicago as soon as you mentioned the question, so I'm, I'm going to go straight with Chicago there. Chicago is correct. Well done. Very good. So level, but Judith has the edge. Here we go. Which actor played Theseus in the 2011 film Immortals and Napoleon Solo in 2015's The Man From Uncle. Henry Cavill, Andrew Garfield or Christian Bale? Well, I don't think it's Henry Cavill, because uh, he played something else. Um, I'm going to say, go down my lucky right and say Christian Bale. OK, do you know this one at all, Mark? I do, yeah, it's um, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill. The one I ruled the out. The one you ruled out. I thought he put something else. And that's much more your territory, Mark, I know. So, your level, how about that? Level after two, your third question. Get this right, Mark, put a bit of pressure on. Judith, which of these 1993 films was directed by Nora Ephron? Philadelphia, Sleepless in Seattle, or The Piano? I was thinking that it could be The Piano. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go for The Piano. No, it is Sleepless in Seattle. That's interesting. I didn't. I thought she wrote the script but didn't direct it. OK. Sleepless in Seattle is the right answer. So <laughs> Judith has the advantage again. Judith, get this right, you're in the final round. Which actress played Lily Langtree in the 1978 TV drama series Lily? Judith, was this Francesca Annis, 
Greta Scacchi oh. or Sherry Lungi. What date did you say it was? 1978. Well, it's rather a long time ago. Uh, 78, 78. I'm just trying to think of, I can see a portrait of Lily Langtry in my head. Who would I cast as her? I think I might cast uh, Greta Scacchi. Her face is sort of quite Edwardian looking. OK, good way of, of working it out. Who's got the most Edwardian face? <laughs> is there any reason, Eggheads, we couldn't choose Greta Scacchi? Well, it's a little bit early for her. A little bit early. How Was she yeah. been four or five years old? Then? Oh, not that early. Oh. No, I mean, she, she broke through, really, in the sort of early to mid-'80s. Yeah. It's Francesca Annis. Oh. Judith, were you not watching TV in the late-'70s? Well, probably, but I can't remember that There wasn't much. that much on. I just, I just remember it, so... Bad luck, in the sense that you got that wrong, but you're still in it. And, again, a let-off there, Mark. She can suddenly turn, Judith, so be careful here. Don't assume she's going to get them all wrong. We go to sudden death. It gets a bit harder. I don't give you alternative options. Which sport featured in the most-watched television moment of the 2016 Rio Olympics in the UK? I would imagine it would be men's 100 metres. No, it's cycling. I would have imagined that. 11 million watched Laura Trott and Jason Kenny win gold. Wow. And that's, it was actually just, just a shade behind the final, or the first of the new series of Bake Off. OK, Judith, your chance to take the round. Which royal character was played in television dramas by Keith Michel in 1970 and Damien Lewis in 2015? Oh, that's um, Henry VIII. You sure? Yes, positive. So am I. Henry VIII is right. Well done. On sudden death, Judith, you've triumphed. You're in the final round. <laughs> Nicely done, Mark. Sorry, beaten by our egghead there. And you won't be able to play in the final. Come back to us, both of you. We'll play the next round. So, as it stands, the Chester Romans have lost two brains from the final round. All right, let's think about this. Do we change the formation? No, I don't, I don't think we're, we're panicking too much just yet. We had a stuttering start last season, um, and we come back through and we managed to battle our way through to the playoffs, so... Yeah. Is it one of those ones where someone just takes the ball and throws it? Hail Mary, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so oh, Hail Mary. Good Hail Mary play. <laughs> <laughs> the egg kids have not lost a brain so far. Music is your next subject. Now, who wants this from Chester Rooms? John. Taking music. John. John. Yeah, John. Yeah. John. Yeah. John. Oil tank cleaner. Against who? Kevin, please. All right. Cleaning out the big oil tank now. <laughs> John from the Chester Romans going against Kevin. Is this the turning point of today's contest? To ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions. So is music your choice of subject, John? It's not ideal, but I'm hoping to fare fairly well. OK. A any particular areas you love? I'm quite eclectic, music taste, really, so I'm hoping to do quite well. So a bit of opera, a bit of classical, a bit of... A bit of everything, uh, really, yeah, Jeremy. Yeah. OK, brilliant. Well, that, that's a really good situation for a quizzer, that's for sure. And I've never asked you, Kevin, what your, what your favourite is. The early Elvis or Verdi or...? Oh, well, I'm more classical than, than popular in that, in that sense, but uh, classical, folk, some bits of world, not, not really so much pop and rock. OK. Well, two eclectic musical people, I think. John, do you want to go first or second? I'd like to go second, please. And your first question now, Kevin. The style of male voice singing, known as barbershop, is traditionally performed by how many people? Four, six or ten? Yeah, normally. I mean, it can, it can be done by larger groups. I've got a friend who actually um, takes part in a, a larger group, but he also does it as part of a quartet. That's the standard, so four. Yes, barbershop quartet, four is right. John, back to you. The instrument called a shawm is played by using which method? It's spelled S-H-A-W-M. Hitting, blowing or plucking? Purely off the spelling, I'm going to say plucking. Plucking. What is this? What is this, Eggs? I think it's like an elbow. It's, so it's a blowing. Well, blowing. Blowing is the answer. I'm sorry. So, Kevin, in the lead. And back to you. Which of these 19th century musicians famously engendered screaming, cheering and swooning responses from his international female following? Franz Liszt, Johannes Brahms or Piotr Tchaikovsky? It's, um, it's Franz Liszt. And I think that the term Listomania was even... It may even have been coined at the time. But certainly when, when Ken Russell made a film about it, he called the film Listomania. 
It, it was like a, you know, a 20th or 21st century pop star, the, the sort of fan adulation that he got. So. Friends list is the right answer. Listomania, who knew? So, John, we've got to get you on the score sheet now. Kevin's two to your zero. Which solo album by Annie Lennox featured the singles Walking on Broken Glass and Why? Medusa, Bear or Diva? I don't really know a great deal about Annie Lennox. Um, I'm going to hazard a guess at Bear. Challenges, do you know? Diva. Diva. Yeah. yeah, Diva is the answer. I'm afraid, John. So no way back in this round. Kevin has taken it. You were beaten by our egghead and won't be in the final. If you both come back, we will play the last round before the crucial final. Well, it's hard going for the Chester Romans, but they love their American football. They know all about hard going. They've lost three brains from the final round. The Eggheads, who are on a roll anyway, are sitting there with all their shells still intact. And the last subject before the final is arts and books. So now who, I know this is what you wanted, John, actually, isn't it? Yeah. So who would like this arts and books? I'll take that. OK, so Pete, against which Egghead? You can have either Steve or Lisa. I'll take Lisa. OK, so Pete from the Chester Romans versus Lisa from the Eggheads on Arts and Books for the last time. Please go to our question room. So what position do you play, then, when you're on the American football pitch, Pete? I play defensive tackle, straight in the middle. So you're going in and you're just basically laying people out? Yeah, I like to hurt people. <laughs> well, that's honest. And, and all the kit, as we were saying earlier, it doesn't matter how much kit you've got, it's still painful. Yeah, especially if you dislocate your kneecap like I did, that really did hurt. I'm guessing you get quite a lot of injuries because it is a real serious contact sport. Uh, yeah, I've only dislocated my kneecap, a few other injuries. Other players have done a lot worse, though. Uh, John especially, he hasn't got any knees left, I don't think. So, yeah, it could always be worse, though. Lisa, do you fancy this? I, I think my best position would probably be something like mascot. Yeah, on the bleachers, I think they call it in the States, don't they? <laughs> yeah, and basically as far away from the actual action as it's possible to be. Makes me want to watch it, though, Pete. I think I could, I could get into it, actually. I think you'd enjoy it. You should come down and train with us one day. Mm, love to, yeah. I'd be, I'd be the same position as Lisa, which is kind of reverse half-back. Horizontal. Yeah, horizontal. Yeah, exactly. Arts and books. Pete, would you like to go first or second? Ladies first, please. All righty. Lisa, your question. What is the name of the bronze sculpture by Rodin? of a seated man resting his chin on his fist. The joker, the thinker, the sleeper. And now the Steve Miliband playing in my head inappropriately. Um, it's the thinker. The thinker is right, not the joker. Got a point. Over to you, Pete. The family of the artist J.M.W. Turner called him by which of his names? Jeffrey, Matthew or William? Uh, I'm not sure. I am going to go with William. Beautifully done. William is right. Good name. Maybe this Good. is the turning point for your team. Lisa. The group of anonymous feminist female artists that adopted the name Guerrilla Girls formed in which city in 1985? And that's Guerrilla as opposed to Gorilla. New York, Paris or Berlin? Well, that's bad. I don't know. Sounds like an American movement. So I don't know if that's enough just to go straight for New York. Do I know anything else about the Gorilla Girls? I don't think I've got anything really to go on here. That's bad. I'll say New York. You are right, New York it is. So, two points for Lisa now and back to you, Pete. The artist Wolfgang Tillmans, born in 1968, has become famous in which field? Photography, sculpture or painting? Once again, I have no clue. Um, I'm going to go photography. Hey, kids? Yeah, we like it. Photography's right. Your, your guesses are unnerving. That's amazing. All right, fantastic. So, you're equal. Third question, Lisa. Which Shakespeare play has the lines, Nay, if our wits run the wild goose chase, I am done, for thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than I am sure I have in my whole five? Is it Hamlet, Twelfth Night, or Romeo and Juliet? <sighs> See, normally I love Shakespeare questions. Um... I don't think it's Romeo and Juliet, being the one I'm most familiar with. My first thought was it would be something like As You Like It or Twelfth Night. I can't think of it fitting in the other two. I know, I know Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet slightly better than Twelfth Night. 
So I'll go with my first instinct and say Twelfth Night. Yeah, I would have taken every single step that you took there. And I actually recently read Romeo and Juliet and couldn't remember this line in it's it. It's there. But it is there. Wow. It's Romeo and Juliet. So two out of three for Lisa. Your chance now. Here we go, Pete. In 2016, Martin Roth announced his decision to quit as director of which London arts institution, citing his disillusionment over the British vote to leave the EU? V&A Museum, Tate Modern, or British Library? Hmm. Unbelievably, once again, I don't know. Um, I go British Library. Do you know this, Judith? I think it's the V&A, isn't it? Yes, it is the V&A Museum. So you both got two out of three. Just, just slightly failed to book your place there. In the final, Pete, I hope it doesn't cost you. Goes to sudden death, gets a bit harder. I don't give you different choices. Lisa, your question. Pippi Longstocking was derived from a character that first appeared in books in which language? Pippi Longstocking. Um, so, yes, she's, yes, that's not her real name, is it, in, uh, in the Astrid Lindgren book? She's called something slightly different, but I think the language we're looking for is Swedish. Swedish is right. She's Pippi Langstrump. That's the one. In the Astrid Lindgren originals. <laughs> Pete, you've got to get this to stay in. Which Italian city started an art biennale in 1895 that has developed into a major international exhibition? So art biennale is B-I-E-N-N-A-L-E. -E. Purely from the spelling uh, and that alone, I'm going to go with Bologna. Now, I wonder whether Biennale means biannual, meaning once every two years, eggheads, is that right? Mm. Therefore, it doesn't take us to Bologna. It's yeah. Venice. So, on sudden death, Lisa edged it, I'm afraid, and you will be in the final round, Lisa. And Pete, you won't, and it's looking difficult for our challengers, but it is definitely not impossible. Please come back. We'll play that final round. So, this is what we have been playing towards. It is time for our final round. As always, it's general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So that's Lex, Pete, Mark and John from the Chester Romans. Would you please now leave the studio? Well, here we are, Billy. I know this wasn't the, the game plan, but you've got a chance. There's no question. In fact, a very good chance. We've seen people win from, from that position. Hopefully. In the last few weeks, even, you're playing to win the Chester Romans £6,000. Lisa? Dave, Kevin, Steve, Judith, you're playing for something that money can't buy. The Egghead's name. As usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time, they're all general knowledge. You can confer. I'm sorry that doesn't help you, Billy. <laughs> the question is, can your one brain defeat these five? And they'll have a lot to thank you for if it happens. Definitely. So good luck, Billy. Yep. All the best to you. Do you want to go first or second? Uh, I'll kick this off. I'll go first, please. OK. Your first question, Billy, is this. For what does the letter P stand in the corporate abbreviation PLC? Is it public, private or personal? I think I'm, I'm quite confident the an answer is public. Public is quite right. Well done. Public limited company. OK. Hey, kids. Which of these UK measures is roughly equivalent to 1.14 litres? Is that a quart, a gallon? Or a pint? Quart's two pints, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. That's about right then, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Because a pint's 568 millilitres. It's that big. Pint's 568, and then gallon's eight pints, so quart, yeah. Another yeah. ask? Or yeah, 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 I, th I think so. Pint. Just have another read, please, Jerry. Yeah, go on. Mm. Which of these UK measures is roughly equivalent to 1.14 litres? I'll happy with a quart, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Uh, consensus opinion, Jeremy, it's a quart. Consensus is quite right. It is a quart. So they've drawn level. That's a bit annoying. But you just keep playing as you are, Billy, and hopefully you'll see them off. The Celtic goddesses Rhiannon and Epona were both associated with which of these creatures? Snakes, horses, or owls? I don't think it's snakes. I can't imagine it being snakes. I'll go for horses, please. Let's see with the eggheads. Is horses right? Yeah. Horses is the right answer, Billy. Nicely done. Two out of two. Sure-footed. Shoulder-padded. Eggheads, your question. Which French expression refers to privileged, wealthy young people and dates back to the time 
of the French Revolution. Nouvelle Vague, Esprit d'Escalier, Jeunesse Dorée. Jeunesse Dorée. Gilded Youth. I'm reliably informed it uh, translates as gilded, gilded Youth, and that's Jeunesse Dorée, Jeremy. Jeunesse Dorée is the right answer. So, toe to toe, tight round, <sighs> equal. Over to you, Billy. In the coronation ceremony, the coronation ring is traditionally placed on which finger of the sovereign? Is it index finger left hand, middle finger right hand, or fourth finger right hand? I can imagine it being on the right hand. Hmm. I'm going to go for the middle finger right hand, go straight down the middle. Hope for the best. Crucial moment this, eggheads? Hey, I think that's right. Middle finger right hand. No, it's the fourth finger. Fourth finger right hand, Billy. Oh. So if the eggheads get this right, they will have taken <sighs> this round and the contest. All five of them sitting here. A lot of brain power, but sometimes sparks fly and they melt. Which range of mountains lies mainly in Tajikistan and has traditionally been known as the roof of the world? Eggheads, hey, is it the Western Ghats, mm. the High Tatras, mm. or the Pamirs? Yeah, West. Yeah, I'll agree, yeah. yeah the other. It's got, it's got, it's got, I'll just go with whatever yeah. you say, kids. Well, it's got to be with the good, because the, other, the others aren't, the others aren't, aren't there, are they? Nowhere near. Yeah. So it must oh, be. Western Ghats are India, aren't they? Tatras. Tatras is in No, Tatras is in this part of the Carpathians. It's in oh, Europe. Really? Right. Europe, yeah. Oh, it's me Yeah. After a bit of discussion, Jeremy, we're pretty confident that's Pamirs. The range of mountains that lies mainly in Tajikistan, the roof of the world, is the Pamirs. We say congratulations, eggheads, you have won. Oh, Billy, I'm sorry. It was yeah. uh, so... E because you, you guys seem to like... You might have got that... that wrong. Wrong. Oh, oh, I, I, no, I, I favoured what Billy said. Yeah, so we, they agreed with you, basically. I knew it wouldn't be the left hand, but... Mm. It's not the wrong. Yeah, it's visualising it, isn't it? But yeah. Yeah. commiserations. I hope you've had a good, a good game. Yeah, it's been, it's been fun. It's yeah. been a good day, yeah. So bad luck, the eggheads are on very good form at the moment and they're on this, this roll which people are talking about. Their winning streak continues. It does mean that the challengers don't go home with the £6,000. So we take the money, we roll it over to our next show. Eggheads, all five of you, my goodness, you're looking almost bulletproof now. I'm wondering if you can ever be beaten. <laughs> Just trying to make it happen. Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have any chance of taking them down. £7,000 will be here for them to play for. Until we quiz again, goodbye. Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. Here they are, the Eggheads, taking on the might of our quiz goliaths today, are the Chester Romans. Now, this team are all members of one of the UK's oldest American football teams. Let's meet them. Hi, I'm Lex, and I'm an engineer surveyor. Hi, I'm Pete, I'm a customer assistant. Hi, I'm Mark, and I'm a film student. Hi, I'm Billy, and I'm a care manager. Hi, I'm John, and I'm an oil tank cleaner. So, Lex and team, welcome. Great to see you. Hello. Hi, John. Oh, I love the... That's good. Is that a kind of an on-pitch wave thing? No, it's just something we've just cooked up. <laughs> Brilliant. I loved it. So, tell us, American football is the thing, is it? It's one of the fastest-growing sports currently in the UK, and it's uh, something we really love getting stuck into. And you're the defensive line, so does that mean they play five at the back in these teams? Uh, no, we, we're actually at the front of the defensive team, and it, it's our job to, to make up the, the gaps within the lines to allow our, their linebackers in to make the tackles. And what is it about American football that's so exciting, compared to the British thing where you don't wear a helmet and you kick a ball? We got tackled, no one cries. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, a lot of us have played both rugby uh, as well as soccer and as well as American football. Um, we've, we've sampled the best of all worlds, really, and don't be fooled by the helmets. It is incredibly painful when you get hit. Sure. Now, I know the team has existed for 30 years. You haven't quizzed before together. Is that Not right? Together. We've, we have quizzed individually, but this is the first time we've all quizzed together. All right. Well, I hope you form a good uh, defensive line against this lot here, the eggheads. Good luck. Every day there is a £1,000 worth of cash up for grabs for our challengers. If they fail to defeat the Eggheads, we roll that prize money over to the next show. So, Chester Romans, the Eggheads are playing well. They've now won five games on the trot, so there is £6,000 here for you to win if you beat them. Would you like to try? Yes. Good. The first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of politics. 
So you can have either Judith or Steve or Kevin, Dave or Lisa to play against. Lex, you're right. Lex. Yeah. 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 So Lex against. I think I'll go with uh, with Dave. Very good. Straight to it. Lex from Chester Romans. Dave, crash helmet on. I better have it on there. I think you need yeah. it on the shoulder pads as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's all right. Yeah. He's defensive and you're highly offensive. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Dave and I are such 80s kids, we, we normally wear shoulder pads anyway, to be honest. <laughs> to ensure there's no conferring, would you please take your positions in our legendary question room? Dave, what do we make of politics at the moment in the world? It's very interesting times, but um, quite uncertain ones. I suppose if you're looking at 2016, having Trump and then Brexit before it, that, that's an incredible sequence. They will, they'll be quizzing on that in 100 years' time. Well, I, I, yeah, because I think we've spoken about it at quizzes there, that if in doubt we're going to say 2016 yeah. <laughs> going forward, you know, when uh, a few years' time we've forgotten a few events, if it's... Well, when did that happen? 2016 is going to be a good bet because everything seems to be packed in. Anyway, Lex, good luck on politics against so-called tremendous knowledge, Dave. Would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go first, please. Here we go. With reference to government-held data, for what does the letter I stand in FOI? Is it information, intuition, or intellect? I think that's information. Yeah. Freedom of information, well done. One to you. OK, Dave. Which party won the greatest number of seats in the 2016 election for the Welsh Assembly? Conservative, Labour or Plaid Cymru? I think that's Labour. Interesting, isn't it, a situation where they get knocked for six in Scotland, but yeah. Wales is still very much Labour terrain. Yeah. Well done. Lex, which Prime Minister was the MP for Highton in the northwest of England? between 1950 and 1983? Harold Wilson, James Callaghan, or Harold Macmillan? I'm not entirely certain with this one, but my instincts when it came up was James Callaghan. So I'd like to go with James Callaghan, please. OK, Prime Minister in the late 70s. Let's just check with the eggheads. Eggs? Okay. Harold Wilson. Wilson. Wilson is the answer, I'm afraid, Lex. So Dave has the edge. Which of these countries has been a member of the European Union since 2004. Dave, is it Switzerland, Serbia or Slovenia? Right, let me have a think. Um, I'm trying to think of when it's a toss-up between Serbia and Slovenia. It's not Switzerland. Well, it's never been a member of the EU. I think Serbia's later. So, no, I'm, I'm going to go with Slovenia, please. Slovenia's quite right, Dave. Well done. Back to you, Lex. What term is used for sittings of the House of Commons in the Grand Committee Room at the Houses of Parliament? Westminster Hall debates, central lobby meetings, or robing room forums? I think the only one I can think of um, head of there is this central lobby meetings. It's wrong, actually. It's Westminster Hall debates, and it's, it's a, I suppose, a, a way of additionally having some other things going on apart from what's happening in the chamber. So, sorry, no way back for you. Dave has won that first round. Early days, guys, challenges, don't be alarmed, but your first competitor has been taken out by an egghead and won't be able to be in the final round. Lex and Dave, please return to your teams. OK, so our Chester Romans have lost a brain from the final round. American football equivalent of that is you've, you've let through a try? Yeah, a touchdown. The, the, a touchdown. The defensive line have broke us apart there and gone straight through to the end. Right, but you know better than anyone that it's not over. We bend, don't break. No, they... Exactly. Exactly. Eggheads have lost no one so far. The next subject is film and TV. So who that is? Yep. Yep. Come on. So, Mark, film OK, student. film student, that's really handy. And which egghead? Obviously, can't be Dave. Uh, I'll go for Judith, please. Lovely. All right, we haven't had a run out on this for a while. Not yeah. for ages. No, it's usually sport. So, Mark, from the Chester Romans versus Judith from the Eggheads, to ensure there's no conferring, please go to the question room now. This seems like a perfect round for you, Mark, because you're a film student. Well, you would hope so, yeah. We'll see. So <laughs> what kind of films do you love? Uh, anything. I, I, would, I would watch any film. Uh, TV, not... I'm hoping that nothing comes up about any soaps. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll have to see, so... And you write scripts yourself? I do. So, you, you were these are film scripts? Uh, uh, yeah, the, yeah uh, film scripts, short film scripts, um, even uh, scripts for TV sometimes. That sounds very creative, Judith, doesn't it? It does, yes. We need to get started on that. 
Well, it sounds rather alarming if you have to quiz against someone like that. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, let's see. Film and TV. Mark, would you like to go first or second? Uh, first, please. Here is your first question. The TV soap Emmerdale Farm was originally set in which fictional village? Weatherfield, Ambridge or Beckendale? Yeah, I was hoping this wouldn't come up. Uh, I'm inclined to go with Weatherfield, please. Let's see, maybe Judith knows. Judith? Isn't Weatherfield Coronation Street? Ambridge is the Archers. Yeah. I, I would say Beckendale. Yes, it is Beckendale. And Weatherfield is Coronation Street. OK, <laughs> Judith, your question. In the episode Yuppie Love in the TV series Only Fools and Horses, which character famously falls through the open hatch of a bar? Rodney, Trigger or Del Boy? It's... It's David Jason. No, which one? It, it's not Trigger. And Rodney is the young one. It's Del Boy. It is Del Boy, famous yeah. scene. Yeah, like the chandelier I scene, love it. Isn't it. I can see it in my mind. Indelible. It's terribly funny. OK. Mark, to catch up, the US legal drama The Good Wife is set in which city? Los Angeles, Chicago or Washington,